Hello, today we're going to implement the eclat algorithm in Python. And I, I have already implemented the a priori algorithm. And the eclat algorithm is just a simple version of the a priori algorithm, where you don't have confidence and lift. Therefore, we are going to use the exactly same code that we used in a priori, but here we are going to remove confidence and lift. And we are going to even use the a priori uh, model here because it, it is exactly the same thing so uh, we're we are going to to do that then so we're going to import in the libraries I'm going to just cop copy the code and briefly explain what's happening quite briefly so these are the libraries that we usually import then we are going to import the data set the data set is the same data set that we used is from it's a data set Let's show you. So this is the data set. is a data set of one week of a supermarket from the south of France. And here we have the transactions and here we have the items uh, from each transaction. Which is the data set that you need for a association rule learning algorithm. If you want a better explain, so I did a video explaining eclat and I did a video explaining a priori. And if you know a priori, you know eclat. Uh, a priori eclat is just a priori without confidence and lift. That's it. We can visualize again the, th the same things that we visualized in in a priori. So visualize item frequencies. We can first check the. Oops. In the relative frequency. So in this case, relative to others, mineral water has 6% of the total, eggs has about 4.5% and so on. And we also have the frequency. So here we, we know that mineral water appeared in about 24% of our baskets eggs appeared in about 70.5% of our baskets, and so on. Okay, we can then format our data set, so formatting the data set, and I'm just, I'm just copying and paste from our previous algorithm that we used to build um, the a priori model. So again, we need to create a list of lists instead of passing a data frame because the algorithm accepts a list of lists and list of lists and not a data frame. So I just need to to get that format and we have to also remove the NAs that we had in our data frame. It's running. Then we are going to get let's print only the first ten transactions. So the first basket has these items, the second basket has these items, this third basket has these items, which is the same thing that we had in our data set, but without the nuts. Right? So here is the second basket and here's the second basket. They are the same thing. Okay. Next we can build the model. So we are going to use, so if you want to install the, the model, we, we ha you have to type this. I already have it, so I'm not going to install it again. And we are going to use the a priori model, even though we are implementing e eclat. I think it, that's because we don't have the actual eclat here in Python. But as I said, the eclat is just the same thing as a priori, but with without confidence and lift, as we can see here. So in a priori, you could also establish, you could also pass as an argument the confidence, confidence, and minimum lift. But here, to simulate the a priori, the eclat algorithm, we are not going to pass them. So this is going to be our eclat algorithm, which is the same thing as a priori, but without confidence and lift. And yep, maybe it works a little bit different internally. Maybe if you actually implemented eclat instead of 
uh, twisting a little bit uh, the a priori algorithm, then maybe your model would be a bit faster, right? But apparently no one has developed the eclat algorithm to Python, so we don't have the algorithm that we can import and implement, but we can definitely change the a priori model to simulate eclat. It's going to give the exactly the same results, but it may be slower because the eclat algorithm may work a little bit different uh, under the hood. So it can be a little bit more f faster if you actually implement the eclat model. But the results are going to be the same because we are going to implement the same thing in R. And in R, you do have the eclat algorithm. And you are going to see that these results are exactly the same the, as the ones that we get in R. But to check that, you have to see the R video that I'm going to, to make after this Python video here. Okay. Moving on. We are going to execute this. Then we create our results. So if you remember, we get this as results, which is a mess. So we have to format it so that we can cle see, uh, clearly see what's happening. Okay. Uh, okay, then we are going to organize the model input, output, sorry. So this is our output already, but now we are going to just organize it. And in a priori, you would have confidence, uh, left, you would have a actual rule. But here, in eclat, you don't even have a rule. You have just an item set. You can't create a rule. Because you are just analyzing the frequency that a set occurred in a, in each of your subsets of your entire data set, transactions of transactions, and you are going to count that and divide by the number of transactions that you have, and that's the definition of support. Therefore, you do not, you can't create any rules because uh, there is no, you know, you can't, like, this subset, milk and eggs, it's the same thing as eggs and milk. So you can't know <laughs> if it, it was because you bought eggs that you were going to buy milk or if it was because you bought, bought milk that you would buy eggs. You don't have... If you only use support and support... Uh, let me put the formula of supports here. So support is the number... Support of a set. So in this case, let's say that our set is milk and milk and eggs is equal to the number of transactions that have uh, this set over the number of the total number of transactions okay so by this definition you can know if milk it's if milk is causing you to buy eggs or if eggs is causing you to buy milk but if you use confidence and lift, then you have orientation and you do know uh, that logic, right? You do know if it was because milk that you bought eggs, for example. But in eclat, you can know that. So you only should use eclat if you want to have a faster model. But if you want to have better insight about a data set, you definitely should use a priori because it gives much more insight. Here we are going to you are going to just create a bunch of sets that were bought together. So a bunch of sets that have items that were bought together, and that's simply it. Okay. So let's see what you get. We are going to execute this. So this is just to make these results prettier. We are just going through them and getting what we want. And now we are going to print them. So we are going to print the 100 first results that we get. So there we go. This is just to to tell to Jupyter Notebook that we do not want to truncate this data frame. Otherwise we would have like three dots here and a lot of rows being removed from uh, the print. But if we use this code, we are going to pre print the maximum no number of rules to be the same as the shape of our data frame, which is much bigger than 100. Then we are going to print the results, and we are going to um, sort it by support. 
So what you can see here, first we are going we are seeing the sets with only one item. And you can see here that the support is zero point uh, about zero point twenty four, which is exactly the same thing that we get in this plot. Because this plot is already doing that, is getting the item in dividing by it's getting yeah it's getting that the count for that item and dividing by the whole trans the whole data set which which is the uh, the number of, the total number of transactions that you have in your data set so yeah so <laughs> the insight that you can get here is that most is that 24 percent of your baskets have mineral water in it that's it and here you can see already sets with two items so you can tell that about 0.06% of your baskets have spaghetti and mineral water and that makes sense because mineral water and spaghetti are items, items that are bought a lot <laughs> You can see here that mineral water is bought 24% of the time and spaghetti is bought about 70.5% of the time. So it makes sense that you see this. And oh, you get repetitions here. That's because that's a problem. So I, I'm, I can, I'm going to correct it. That's a problem not with the, the model, but with how I organized it. And to correct it. I have to do this, suppose. No, subset is result two. Okay, so and then let me think a little bit here. So I'm going through all the results, and from this result, I'm going I'm grabbing the subset. And the subset. Wait, yeah. And the subset is not being used here. Okay, so I actually can only remove this. Let me see if I get the results that I'm expecting. Ba -da -da -da. Yep. Okay. So I do not have uh, repetitions anymore, and I do have uh, repetitions. I I did have uh, re repetitions because in um, in a priori you have repeated sets, item sets, with different rules. So that's why you need uh, that code to get all the rules. Okay. So yeah, we still get uh, mineral water having this support, but we do not have repetitions anymore. So here we start to get. Um, uh, sorry, we get some here as well. Some sets that have a some sets with two items that have a support. Okay, okay. Here, let me see if you have if you have three items here. No, but if you increase this to five hundred, you are going to get three items. Like this spaghetti, mineral water, and ground beef. Beef appears in 0.017% of your baskets. So this set appears together in 0.017% of your of your whole transactions. Okay. And that's it. That's simply it. And let's let us just check how many results do we have. Oops. So we have, let's say, 950 results, or 90, yeah, 959 results, and that's much harder to interpret, <laughs> you know. So if you use a priori, you would get actual rules, and you would get a better, a easier way to interpret what's happening, and more trustworthy rules right here you can just check the support so it's not not some not so much information so you can't 
uh, get some in get much insight from just using eclat okay so that's it let's stick with 100 I will just res restart the kernel and run run it all again to see if to see if it's working. I am going to execute it all at once. So I cleaned it and I'm going to execute it all. It's executing. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's it for. Eclat. In a nutshell, if you know what is support, use Eclat if you only know, want to know what the support is. And yeah, use Eclat if you only know if you only cares about the support. And use Apriori if you want to get more insight about your data. Okay. Bye bye.